the Wilmar Fuji. Welcome to Jason Unleashed. How are you? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. I've watched you for years. Actually, oh, thank you. Of course, Will. When I came to LA as um, a young budding host, and I was just, you know, consuming talented people on air doing things, you were one of the people who I enjoyed watching the most. And we're going to talk about why. But first and foremost, how's life, man? How are things on the on the West Coast? <laughs> Right now, I'm just gonna be real, Jason. It's a lot right now. I've been I've been one of those those moments where it's like when it rains, it pours, and there's just so much going on. You get past a certain age, and you're like, oh no, things are happening, and I and I have no control over any of these things. I'm right there with you. Isn't it interesting? You were gonna say season. Um, I'm in one of those seasons too, where it was where even like, though. I, even though I hate that phrase, I don't know. It just got so, I feel like it's so overused now. It's like everybody's like, what season? What season? What season? Um, and, but I caught myself about to say it, even though it's like a personal thing that every time I hear it, I'm like, well, yeah, no. it's it, it's one of those like, um, it is, first of all, it's okay to say it, it is a season because you know, life yeah, 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 happens yeah. in seasons. The mm -hmm. year happens in seasons, but you're in a moment. Let's say moment. That's another word I hate too, but we're in the moment, Will, yeah. as being men in our 40s who- um, You're in your 40s? Will, I'm actually older than you, brother. No, shh. Okay, I swear here. No I kidding. Fucking, you can fucking say shit on Jason Elise. No Elite. shit. Oh my yeah, God. dude, but black don't crack, Will. Black don't crack. You look- Amazing. But Can so I just do say? you. I mean, if I go to your Instagram, you're in the gym working out. You're a dad of two beautiful young young children, Ava and William. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, married. yeah. Thank you. All the things. Yeah. But I, I I get what you're saying though, because especially in this business that works like no other, you're up mm -hmm. and you're down. Things mm -hmm. change so quickly. As you said, I've got two little kids, so that is sort of an unrelenting aspect of life. Like yeah. you know, for example. Um, you know, my daughter is sick. So that means I'm sick. They're in, on spring break. So they're in a camp today. And my son, who's two, decides this morning, he doesn't want to go to the camp, even though it's at his school. He went yesterday. He loved it. And so screaming fit trying to get out of the door, you know, and then you throw on top of that, like all of the other stuff that happens in life, right? you know, like, yeah, you know, you go to the doctor a few times, you get some health stuff. It's just like, that's what I mean when I say it's unrelenting on top of, yes, absolutely. Like the career stuff, which is always sort of either, uh, you know, on the front burner or the back burner. Or sometimes not burning at all. Sometimes I'm like, you know, let's keep burning. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or, <laughs> always sometimes, or sometimes just totally in flames and right, not in the way the you wanted. Just the on fire, on. Right. but not in the great way where you're like, oh, you're on fire. It's like, no, it's going down. Right, right. Dumpster <laughs> fire, dumpster fire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, how has becoming a father, like, just enriched your life? Obviously, becoming a dad is a life-changing experience, for sure. I'm I'm only, I don't have any bio kids of my own. I have stepkids, mm -hmm. which, who I, whom I love and adore, and I have two dogs. Amazing. So, so yeah. my dogs are unrelenting. But for you, I mean, like, becoming a dad, we see you just, they are the apple of your eye. If you, if we, you are so doting. Yeah. You love yes. your family so much, and it's and it shows. It's not, it, it's so evident that they, your wife, and your two kids are your world. How much joy are you having or how much joy have you experienced being a father? I would say, I would say all of the joy that I experience now is via my children. Um, yeah, all of it. I like, there's other stuff that pops up, but it's so, um, it's so transient. It's so like here in the moment and then gone. Yeah. Um, the joy that I experience with my kids is uh, consistent and permanent. And even when they're like pushing all the buttons and I am having a rough day with them and I am getting frustrated, the, like I think about their smiling faces or their cute little faces and it just makes me happy. It's it, it, I, it's almost like cliched to say, but it is the thing that um, gave me a purpose. You know, like I am not one of those people who was like, oh, my work has to be my purpose. And it certainly was for a long time. But then I had kids and it was like, well, they're now the reason for me. And they're the reason why I need to like exercise and oh, this water bottle there. Um, and they're the reason that I need to stay 
they're the reason that I need to stay as fit as I can for as long as I can, because I want to be around. I had kids when I was thir- sorry, when I was 38. Um, and I want to be around for as long as I can. And so that sort of drives my metric for my personal health, my, you know, my financial health, my career success. It's all vis-a-vis them. Yeah. I mean, that's, if that, that makes, makes sense. sense. No, no, it makes complete and total sense. And it makes so much, it makes so much sense that it's really inspiring because, you know, Will, we we are driven and motivated by things that we think matter. And sure, like, you know, we grow and as we move along in life, what mattered five years ago may not matter in the least now, five years later. And to have such solid, meaningful, intentional, powerful, very precious things in your life that give you that motivation that's so like just whole and from a good space that is such a beautiful thing people go their whole lives wanting that but yet we settle we settle for oh i have a great car um my my job i have a, i have a great job but you hate your job or i have you a myriad of bad relationships that you just accept or or just all the things that may not be the best for you or may not be the most positive but because we don't we haven't been fortunate enough to have something like children and and things that you just described we don't really get to experience that magic so i think you having that is, is so illustrative of what success is really and truly and it's coming from such a rich bountiful and pure place yeah thank you um yeah i mean i you know listen if like cars or clothes or watches are a person's thing like i'm not gonna fault them for that like sure. having kids is uh you know having kids is life altering and it's and it can be really challenging in a lot of ways and you know um and so yeah i i you know but yeah. if people are not on that tip like you know, that's good for them. That's totally great. And like, and more power to you. I personally, like, I think I hit, um, how old was I? Maybe 36. And I was like, I had come home from work. I'd been doing, you know, two shows and interviews and whatever. I had gone to the gym and I came home and it was like seven o'clock and I was like watching TV, eating dinner with my wife. And I was like, is this what the rest of my life is going to be like? Uh, like I didn't have any other hobbies or anything like that where I was like, oh, I volunteer and I, you know, play squash or whatever the fuck people do. I don't even know. Um, and so when I had kids, it was like, this is where my attention, my intention, all of that has got to go uh, to them. You know, if I'm not at work, I'm I'm with them. And also uh, when I was 36, my dad died and I... Uh, and I just had the the stark realization that that like that is the stuff that matters. Like right. family is what matters. You know, they are going to be my legacy when I'm on my when I'm on my deathbed. I I don't know if I'll be thinking about my work, but I can I'm sure shit going to be thinking about my family and my friends and my kids and and um and those relationships and what they and what they mean to me. Mm -hmm. And so that is another way in which, you know, just sort of crystallized who I am and what, what I want to be. I couldn't have said it better myself. Will you, you are, and this is what, this is one of the things that really resonates about you watching you on TV. I mean, you mentioned two shows, you had the opportunities to work at the biggest platforms and entertainment and and do an, an exceptional job. I every day I used to watch Live from E, one of my favorite shows. Because because you're I del- love that show. It was I so good. That. You were so laid back. And I would always clock your outfits in a good way. I'm like, oh Will's wearing a cardigan today. <laughs> Will's wearing <laughs> it was What's that good? show was like it's they kind of messed with our show depending on other whatever what other shows that were on broadcast. So if you weren't familiar, Live from E was a, a digital show that I hosted uh, from on E with or on E online and YouTube and f- Facebook with two other co-hosts uh, who <laughs> Melanie Bromley, who was Love one Melanie. of my favorites. And yeah. then it changed either, you know, it was K 
Ken Baker a long time ago. And then after that, I think Nina Parker was our most uh, consistent, um, consistent host. And so it, sometimes it was like at eight o'clock in the morning. And I was like, I'm not going to get dressed up for this. Like, I'm just, this is what I'm wearing to, to work today. And so, uh, and then at other times it was at 1030 in the morning for some reason. And so then I had gone through hair and makeup and, and wardrobe and stuff like that. <laughs> like, then I went, and after 10 o'clock, I went through hair and yeah, makeup. Yeah, because it was like, you know, then there was like the, this is so like uh, the minutia of this. Like that's when we had our, at E, we had our, our hair and makeup times. And it, it was like, you kind of had to go in when they told you you had to go in regardless of you know, what you kind what you wanted. Sure. And so mine was at 10 a.m. So if the show was at 1030, then I was already I was already done. You know, well, you I mean, your your story is so great because you started as a producer at E, right? Mm -hmm. Like people. Yeah. Get, get their find their way into the entertainment industry in a myriad of different ways. But for you, you started as a producer mm -hmm. helping Ryan Seacrest on red carpets, doing all this, all these things, not knowing or. I'm sure you knew, but really having this full circle moment to you getting in front of the camera and then you shining and you being this natural, people loving you, the brassy E saying like, hold up, this guy has something. What was that experience like for you at E? Because for millions of probably wannabe hosts, still, mm -hmm. even in this mm -hmm. age of digital, E was the benchmark. E is yeah. the benchmark. And you had a front row seat behind the scenes to watch an incredible talent, Giuliana, Ryan, uh, Zana, like all these people, Zuri, you included, and then you got to be in front of the camera. What was that like for you, getting that one shot? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, my my story is not, is not like most people's stories in that, in that regard. I, um, yeah, I came in, I started as a PA on a makeover show for the Style Network. I eventually did like a bunch of other specials and, you know, I had to sort of learn all of this on the fly. Got moved into news in about 2000, E! News in about 2005. Wow. At the time, it was Juliana Rancic and uh, Depandi at the time. Yeah. And um, who else? Patrick Stinson, Samantha Harris. Those were the hosts. I think Ashlyn Gorse came on. And it was even before we had, had hired Jason Kennedy. And so I was there. I they, they were like, what can you do? And I was like, I can do anything, even though I had no idea what I was doing with any of it. Um, so they put me in the field as an AP, as an associate producer, going and doing interviews on red carpets and movie junkets and stuff like that. And at the time I had a uh, a boss executive producer who gave me a lot of feedback that helped me figure out how to do that job. And then I got paired up with Ryan when Ryan was announced as the host of E! News. Um, they paired me up with him. And so I would produce him for all of his local LA interviews. I would travel w with him, not on his plane, but uh, in tandem to the cities that he was going to do American Idol at. And I would set up our show, set up a, a shot a, to shoot E! News from. And I did that for a long time. All the while, like I am, you know, when I'm back in LA, I'm going and doing my own interviews and um, my own junkets and stuff like that you know, shooting a lot of trend pieces. We called them trendies. Uh, <laughs> the amount of makeovers that I sat through is just like uncountable. So many of them. Um, and then during, I was also Ryan's producer for Live from the Red Carpet. And one year he, I can't remember what year it was, maybe 2011. And for whatever reason, he was in our position at the Academy Awards and the ABC had an embargo on the last maybe hour of the carpet so that no other outlet could broadcast from the red carpet for that hour. Now at E, we had live from red carpet and then we wanted to end live from red carpet being able to toss to the Oscars. So they had to fill an extra hour of time. I think it was an hour of time. And... So Ryan was going to finish interviews at about four o'clock at our position and then walk over to the Roosevelt to go finish the show from the Roosevelt with Juliana and whoever else was the, the hosting that year. And so they were like, okay, Will, since you've been doing your own interviews for a very long time and we trust you, if anybody else, if Ryan leaves and anybody else comes, you just interview them. And I was like, no problem. 
he leaves. He does a few interviews after the embargo. He leaves. He takes off. Maybe like 10 minutes later, Angelina and Brad come through the Persinium Arch and they're they're like, oh, Angelina and Brad was like, they're not going to do interviews. And then their publicist comes over and is like, how are you going to have Angelina and Brad in just a couple of minutes? And I was like, oh, shit. So I like get ready. We all, you know, all the crew, we we're all kind of just like lounging around. Like we've been working super hard and stressed out for the last few hours. You know, the adrenaline is leaving everyone's body. And then it was like time to gear up again. So I interview Angelina. I interview Brad. And at our position, there were three cameras. There is the handheld on Julia. Actually, was there any handle? Handheld on Juliana. The two shot of Ryan and Juliana. And then like an, a robotic cam from the top. And so I interviewed her and I interview her kind of just as like, as a producer, like I just sort of hammer her about her kids, <laughs> like the kids watching her get ready or what do they think of this or whatever, you know, what it, you know, just, just in the hopes, because the way I had traditionally done interviews was like, just get a good soundbite, yeah, just get sure. a single good soundbite or a moment or something that we can put on the show. Right. And so what they wind up using is in the post show is they clip that out and use the wide shot. So I'm in it. I'm like half dressed and like kind of a mess looking, but they did it and they put it on the show. And after that, it was like, is this something that you want to do? We had hired a guy who at on E! News who, you know, didn't really want to do it. He kind of wanted to be the person being interviewed and in all fairness, like, you know, I get it. Um, it's a grind. The people get that job and they think, oh, I'm, gonna be like I'm, I'm gonna be something right i'm a celeb now yeah and he was kind of already a celebrity in his own right in a way um but it's kind of a grind you're like on press lines and you're in cramped spaces and you're kind of like elbowing other people at other outlets and trying to you know trying to get a, a, an interview with somebody and so they were like you do this do you want to do this? Like we need a new dude and you're on the list. And I was like, as long as if I'm terrible at it, like I could just go back to doing what I was doing and I'm not going to get fired. Yeah. And so they put me on it. Um, I think my first carpet was dancing with the stars. Like I'd been covering dancing with the stars for years. That's where I met my wife. And, and so I was on camera for that and they were like, yeah, great. This is working. So for a couple of years, I still continue to produce other talent and I did my own interviews. Like I would produce talent during the day and then at night I'd be on my own red carpets as talent. Um, and I think I, that was maybe 2012, 2013, something like that. And so, yeah, I came in just like, they started putting me on camera just about when Zuri, uh, Aaron Lim, Carissa, uh and sibley skulls were they had they had just well carissa had been with e online but sibley aaron and zuri they were bringing them over that's that was uh, so we all sort of started at about the in that at capacity at the same time even though i had our, i had been there at that point for like six or seven years or something like that well that story is so dope and it's so dope because you weren't you know you weren't trying to be on camera and no. you, you were a student of all of everything. Hannah Lux Davis is a music video director. Of course, you know, she's directed so many great videos. Um, and I, when I, a really good friend of mine, I talked to her about how she got into, into music videos and she said, I went to the back door. I was a hair and makeup artist and I felt like I wanted to do this. So I learned everything before I learned the craft. Obviously she went to school for it, but yeah. there's all these different ways you can get in. And I'm finding that, especially, you know, being on, I've been on, I've been on there since I was 16. People don't want to do the work. Now with social media and the way things seem so instant, people don't realize that what you did, you, you grinded, you cut your teeth, you shut up and listen to people who knew better than you. You paid attention and you were grateful to be there. And <laughs> what do they say? Yeah, about yeah, yeah. Right. It's yeah. Luck and preparation meets opportunity. You have prepared and you kind of got lucky in a way, but you oh, were very you were, lucky. But had you not did all the work prior to that and had stick to this and said, I'm going to be the I'm going to I'm going to bloom where I'm planted in hopes of having my tree sprout other trees in other places. 
you wouldn't have become the Wilmar Fuji you are now. I mean, from E to honorable mention to Quibi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if this wasn't my house with my coffee, I would pour some out. Yeah, then pour, I'd have to clean pour, it up. Pour, and that would pour, some, pour some Starbucks water for Quibi. Yeah. But then you 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 move on from E. Great great career at E. I mean, so many great moments. Mm -hmm. Then you landed Entertainment Tonight. What? Mm -hmm. Massive. How did that come about? Yeah, I so you know, this was really like a testament to just being as friendly as possible um, with people. So when E! News in 2018, if for those of you not familiar, um, was a nightly show based in Los Angeles at seven o'clock. It was an hour show. At some point, somebody made the decision, you know what we should do? Let's move it to 7 a.m. in the morning and we're going to move it to New York. New York. Oh. And so they laid off most of the staff this is about the time that I was also going through the Quibi auditions. Um, that was 2019. This is 2018. No, it's 2019. 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They right. made. They might have made the announcement. Uh, I can't remember. So 2019, yes. So I'm going through the Quibi process. They know that they're going to be booting up this show in New York, and so they make the announcement. And Kelty Knight, who I had known from Red Carpets, was like, "You have to go meet with Aaron Johnson over at." Awesome. Um, at entertainment Incredible. tonight. Yeah. She puts me together on an email. I go over there. I meet with her and she's like, we know who you are. We're a big fan of your work. What's your deal? And I was like, I'm technically still under contract for uh, like another year. And my lawyer at the time was like, it's a bad idea for you to like bail on this contract for you to go audition for somebody else. I let them know that. And I went on with my life. And then the lockdown happened. I They canceled E! News that summer, of that first summer of, of the lockdown. And then they canceled, canceled, whatever they did with Quibi, folded it back up into its box and put it on a shelf. <laughs> right, totally. <laughs> whatever they did, I have no idea. And, um, and so that happened. And it, the timing was actually really kind of fortuitous because we were just about to have our our second, my my son. And after we had him, I emailed Aaron and was like, hey, I'm my contract is up. You know, keep me in mind if you guys are uh, you know, if if things are in flux there. And a couple of months later, she I think she like DM'd me on Instagram that was like, hey, would you be interested in a digital correspondent role? And I, at that point, I was like, yeah. I mean, unless it's a really terrible job, right? Um, yes, I will. I'm happy to do that. And so we moved forward. I started there in no that following no uh, November, I think it was. And yeah, and so I just, <laughs> how did I wind up there? I asked. <laughs> That's cool. But we're always trying to force and coerce and trying to make things happen because our generation, we're told you got to go out and make shit happen. Yeah. And you were at E, E fold, that experience ended, you quibby, that experience ended. And you were like, well, you know what? Let me just go on, go on and live my life. You were okay with, with being just, your, your career wasn't defining you. And then lo and behold, the juggernaut the the number one entertainment news source in the fucking world is like, <laughs> hey Will, and in your DMs even like, hey, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I think, hey, like, you up? Are you up? <laughs> right, right. What are you doing, hey bro? Uh, you lift, but it's. I think it's because you let go and you allowed and you and you were okay. And haven't you noticed? And in, in your life, all the times where you just said, eh, I'll take it or leave it. It's abundant. It's like when you're going to look for a pair of shoes at I don't know at Marshalls of all places. Or you're looking for like a certain like like a certain something you can't find it you stop yeah. looking for it and it's in abundance it's like throwing at you. I think that's this thing, this but is exactly how I, I I thought of and would tell people uh, about relationships right. It's yeah. like the more you're out there trying to make it happen, like the chances that you're going to be happy or find the right situation for you are probably not as good. But the moment you kind of just pause and think about yourself and make sure that you're good and, and open yourself up to whatever is going to happen. It tends to just gravitate to you. It, it found it, exactly. you know, and look, to be frank, we tell these stories from a perspective of like, because it worked out. Okay. <laughs>